For your program to be able to work with the contents of a database, it must make a connection to that database. Your program must load the database driver and use it to create the connection object. Let me show you the whole procedure. I've written a program that does the whole thing. There are options here and there that you can use to do some of these things in a different way, but I want to show you one way to do it first so you will have an idea of what's going on. The first thing you want to do is set your class path variable so it includes the jar file that contains the database driver that you're going to be using. Now I'm using the point base database that comes with J2EE so I'm using the driver that comes with it. It's in a jar file named pbclient.jar so you need to set your class path to that value. This name shows you where it's installed on my system, and the path name should be similar on yours. Now, don't forget, when you set the class path variable, it overrides the default, so you may want to insert a period in the path so you can run class files in the current directory. I also find it convenient to insert the J2EE jar file in this path. On a Windows system, the class path is a list of directory names separated by semicolons. On a Unix system, the names are separated by colons, otherwise it's the same. If you're using a different driver, it more than likely has been installed as a jar file, so you'll need to point the class path to it instead of this one. With the class path set and the database server running, that's all we need to do outside the program. So let's look inside the program. The class named showConnect has a main method that you can run and have it show you information resulting from your connection. I found this a handy program to have. You can change these string constants at the top of the program and use different drivers to connect to different databases in different ways. This is the full package name of the standard driver for the point-based database. With the class path set, the software will be able to use this path to load the driver class. But I'm getting ahead of myself. You just need to know that what we have here is the name of a class and that it is found in the usual Java way. This is the URL that locates the database itself. It's called a URL because it's a string that is a resource locator, but its exact format will vary from one database to another. If you have installed a third-party database and driver, you'll need to find out just what form the URL takes for it. Now, the URL always begins with JDBC and a colon. Following that is the name of the database. And following that is the actual data source. But this format is rather loose. The data source can be a port number and the name of a defined database as shown here. It can be a TNS names entry for Oracle or an ODBC bridge name or some other string for some other connection arrangement. That's one of the things that makes this program so useful. You can experiment with a string until you find out something that actually connects. Now here are the strings for the username and the password for this database. You may remember all of this from the running of the console program earlier. There are other drivers and some other strings that work with this database, but I'm going to be using this one throughout just for consistency.